Hello and welcome back to Tiger Talk, the official podcast of Workshop Town. It's now episode three and how we've not been taken off at air, I don't know, Bumpy, but we'll keep going. Uh, and we've got a win to tell you about uh, on Tuesday night. But first we go over to another part of Workshop via satellite to make sure Luke is all right. Luke, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Dev. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. I'm a bit stressful. We've got uh, three programme deadlines in one week uh, that's been creeping up. Uh, but today we're talking about football, a little break from writing. Here's what you can expect to come on today's episode. We will talk about Sheffield FC and the victory over them. Uh, we'll also preview uh, the Eastwood community game, obviously. So being a bit of a stressful few days, finding out the result of the verdict from the FA. But we are playing Eastwood. Um, you'll also hear from Craig Parry and Liam Bateman on their thoughts on the last game and the one coming up. We also kept a little bit of Baxendale's feature last week, um, selfishly for this week, talking about the FA Cup fixtures. He's got a little story uh, from what a previous manager said about him and how he'd love to go on a cup run with Works Uptown this season after last season's disappointment. We also speak to Andy's told me to specifically say this as well, uh, you dog uh kitman ewan coleman talks about how he's found life at works at town so far so let's get into it something tells me i make something good. something tells me i make something woke up this morning feeling fine so luke uh sheffield fc nil three works up town uh, unfortunately, it started off on a bad note. Uh, I know a lot of fans were complaining about the gate price being £11, £2 parking. Uh, but worst of all, £2 for a cup of tea. Um, it's <laughs> definitely, definitely not right at non-league level, at this level especially. But the lads, they bounced back from Saturday's defeat uh, and it was a brilliant game, wasn't it, Luke? Yeah, I, 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 thought, um, I thought we played well. Uh, and it's it's great confidence for the squad going into uh, the next game. Just the manner of the whole performance, it, it's what, what was needed, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think uh, after Saturday, um, I, I, I thought we needed a response and I, I thought the lads, you could see from the start of the game, they, they started on the front foot and you could see the mindset. They wanted, they wanted a performance and a result like they got. And uh, it, it was a pleasure to watch. We sort of um, made sure everything that we... Because we said on Saturday that we sort of undid every all the good work we did in pre-season um, in one game in 90 minutes. And obviously they they made sure to make it quite negative in the middle. But um, it's Tuesday night, the defence, the back four was strong. Um, but we'll start with that, actually, uh, Luke, because obviously you asked Paz the question. But... yeah. Um, you really, really were impressed with that back four and Tien and Brooks. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was a solid, disciplined, professional performance. I, I, I thought every man at the at the back were they were solid. They won every tackle, every header. The communication was there, uh, and and Tien and two saves straight after that first goal. That that helped us push forward for that second goal and I, I just thought I just thought we got better as the game went on. As uh, I thought every minute we just got stronger, we got fitter. We just I thought we just we were just too much for him on the night to be fair. I think the left hand side of that defence as well, Lewis Gibbons um, and Ben Turner will both probably admit that um it weren't the best of performances from them. But tonight um I think there was uh, Lewis's passing was was superb, but his tackling and his reading of the game was brilliant. Uh, and, and and we actually saw the partnership between him and Pico um, that we'd seen throughout pre-season. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I thought uh, I, I thought in pre-season they looked strong. Certainly the last three games with the clean sheets that, that, we, that we've highlighted on the podcast and in the interviews. Uh, so it, it was disappointing on, like you said, on uh, against Yorkshire Amateur to, to to see what happened. But I thought Tuesday night they were just back on song song with each other, and uh, like you said, the passing out of out of defence was 
there were some fantastic balls zipped across uh, across the pitch. And I, I believe now, I think I think they're just looking forward now, and it's it's that winning mentality, isn't it? I believe uh, even even at the back, they, they they just look so confident, don't they? Yeah, I mean, as we've played quite a bit, um, the back pairing has been Pico and and Gibbons, um, and obviously Ben when we've played with three. And I think the other night, um, Turner seemed a little bit more conservative. He tucked in yeah. really well uh, at the back and was a little bit more defensive than he was against the Yorkshire Amateur. Um, and I think the reason why he was uh, good defensively is because he uh, a lot of the responsibility was in the midfield and the forward line. Um, he brought in, obviously, Cody commanded the uh, and shield the back four in that sort of screen position. Um, Alex came in after his impressive performance against uh, Yorkshire Amateur. Aaron Sennett Nielsen came off the bench against Yorkshire Amateur and started, uh, played the full 90 against Sheffield. And he was absolutely brilliant on the ball. And it was his uh, sort of cross, well, it was his cross, uh, beating his marker, getting a cross in for Alex's header. And it were a brilliant first goal, weren't it? Yeah, I mean, like, like you say. Aaron's uh, Aaron's cross was it, it was unbelievable. I mean, he could see. I mean, to to anticipate and see uh, uh, Alex's run, uh, and to put it into a position where it was just perfect for Alex just to just a, a lovely run forward and a bullet header into the roof at net. It, I mean, we were so close to the goal; it were it, it were unbelievable to to see it in in real time. Yeah, I mean, it just. I think there was just the sheer determination to get in front of the defender to flick it on, and yeah. um, when obviously, if you if you haven't yet, um, the Tigers view um, our new feature taking you behind the scenes, close to the action, uh, will be out before this podcast. So make sure to have a uh, well listen to us first, and then go and watch that. Um, but as you can see on the video, you can see just where he comes from, nowhere, and just a beautiful glance in header past the goalkeeper. Uh, after that, there was some uh, really good scenes. I think they were straight in front of you where Alex just let out a roar yeah. um, euphoria just because it sort of um, signified the relief after a stressful weekend. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of frustrations were taken out in that header. Uh, it were it, it were powerful, weren't it? I mean, like you said, the, the connection with the with the fans uh, from the celebration were it was second to none. It, it just it just put everyone on a massive high early on in the game, and I think um, it, it's great to see that that got that bond between players and, and and fans. What do you think? It's needed, especially after the pandemic. Um, <laughs> with how distant we've had to be, and even when we came back last year, there was all the restrictions. You couldn't actually get close to the players, and and now with with the open day, with players coming into the bar. Um, we've seen the likes of bikes, you know, mixing in. I know yeah. Zane uh, before match, uh, before the match on Saturday, Zane actually came in, sat down with the supporters. Uh, and yeah. Him and him and uh, Glenn were were chatting about Manchester United, and, and it's what's needed at a club at this level. And um, one that that the supporters signify works up town, and then in the past we've seen how they saved the the club, and yeah. And now it's good to see that, um, obviously with Pete coming in, that. Pete's got all these players in. Well, Parry, Parry's got all these players in, but because of Pete's work and the background as well, is that the fans that have saved us and Pete and Paz and that, it's all coming together. Um, and speaking of Paz, before we uh, move on, let's hear from him uh, on Saturday night. Obviously, the, the video didn't go up. I apologise uh, for anyone that were expecting that to score. We had a couple of complications um, post-match with it. But he, let's hear from Paz on the performance, the bounce-back ability, and Alex Darshenko. Yeah, I think you are probably the perfect performance from us, really. And I think needed after after Saturday. Um, you know, I thought the lads bounced back well, performed well, performed like we've we've been doing. You know, in in all the all the pre-season, really. So uh, yeah, really, really pleased tonight with the performance. And I, I'm pleased for I'm pleased for the lads, really, because like I said, they've had a you know had a, a great pre-season. You know, we took a little bit of a, a blip. Saturday is if Worlds ended and you know it was just one game and you know it's I think good sides can always dust themselves down and, and, and bounce back so I'm really proud of the lads tonight really pleased for them because that's what they've done and uh, you talking about the response how great was it not just uh, attacking were good but defensively as well yeah I think you were great I think uh, I think we defended well as a team obviously the back four four this team has pulled two you know 
world class saves off the first half. So uh, you know, I think that's again the caliber keeper that that we've got with him. But I think overall as a team, I think we we defend as well when we need needed to. But you know, when we attack, we we turn defence into attack pretty quickly. And, and you know, you, you've seen the youth we had in midfield. We've got the legs. You know, we've certainly got pretty quick. So yeah, I will please. I won't, I won't just please with the defending as a back four and obviously the keeper. I'll, I'll please as 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 a side you know as a, as a unit everyone's trying to help each other everyone's trying to win the ball back high up the pitch and i think you're a good team effort in, in the defensive side of things this week uh, today and uh Starsenko came to the side today yeah after, after a good performance on saturday how impressed was you with his performance alex has been on fire for pre-season i don't think there's any hiding back to that you know i think he's He's really, I've had him obviously and known him for the last two years and this is the best I've I've seen him. It's, it's if he's, the confidence that was in out of him, it's, if, it's as if he's two inch taller, filled out, you know, more stronger. Technically wise, he's, he's, he's as good as anything, you know, around in, in the position that we play him. And I thought he did, I thought he, he, he did extremely well and when he got on the ball, he, he took, he's in the show at the end and, you know, he's, he's, the, the ability's there for the kid to, you know, to see him. Um, you know, he's, he's added things to his game as well. Like I said, I've known him for quite a few years now, but he's added the other side of the game, you know, the defensive side, which, you know, we, we need as a team, which allows him then to go do his magic in, in the final third and, and open teams up. And we're back. Um, a passionate interview, I think, from Paz. I think it would just, you could tell the relief in his eyes, uh, Luke. Yeah, I, I agree with the point you made. And uh, like you say, he spoke. He, he spoke with uh, with passion. It, it was. It, it was. He was very proud, and I think he, he he let us know, and the fans who watched the interview know how how proud he was of of all the lads. And uh, I don't think I don't think there were anyone that put a bad performance in it. I think Craig was just happy with how the lads started the game and, and how they ended up getting better and better and stronger and I, I think he uh, I think he's, he's he's more relieved for the players after after Saturday and uh, like I say I think a lot of emotions came out in that, that interview I think there's um, there's certainly you know you talk about every man to a T put their performances in we've already yeah. mentioned several players but um, you know like like so if uh, uh, was a threat all game. Unfortunately, yeah. he didn't come off for him in the end, which he really deserved a goal with how yeah. much he put in. Yeah. Uh, ben Tomo, uh, his link-up player, were absolutely superb, um, yeah. especially for Zane's goal. Um, <clears throat> when, obviously, Deegan came back into the, the side after, obviously, he got sent off on Saturday, which means that after it takes seven days to process and come through at non-league level, meaning that he could play on Tuesday night. He came on, uh, showed up the defence, was brilliantly uh, brilliant, and his long throw created that chance for Tomo to flick it on, uh, and Zane's goal on the turn was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think um, I think if he was uh, was was a handful throughout the game, I thought their defenders just, just couldn't deal with him, McKeem and Ben. I thought they were just the movement was spot on. They were making the right runs at the right time. Uh, they were holding the ball up well. I thought. The they got better. Uh, it's in. I mean, as the second half went on, they were just. You could see they were just. They they'd had enough. Uh, I think halfway through that second half, certainly when the third goal went in, I think they were just. They just couldn't wait for the final whistle, and uh, I, I think um, I think the goal uh, when, when Deegan, like you say, being uh, after Saturday being sent off, I think he. Uh, he read a few wrongs. Uh, he 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 was brilliant at the back, but I thought he was very good going forward. I thought his his overlap runs that he was making were causing them problems. I think they couldn't they couldn't deal with that overlap run that, that, and the balls we were playing through. And uh, it it were it, it was uh, it was a good performance, and I'm really happy. Yeah, uh, we've also got to mention Cody in, in the centre, um, yeah. a true pivot. Um, obviously spraying balls about, um, but he. The thing that impressed me a lot more was when uh, there was a turnover in play, he was a lot more aggressive um, and won the ball back quickly. Um, and then straight away, he'd be trying to find that right-hand side um, with Liam Bateman, who I'm purposely leaving later on due to uh, scripting and uh, things we've got coming up with an interview with him. But um, Cody was great. Uh, I think one uh, backs came on. Uh, use his experience to you know shift play, make sure the lads were ticking over. But 
Um, Sam Aykroyd, we got a first glimpse of him, obviously moving from Parkgate, and he looked really bright. And the, probably the biggest villain on the night was the linesman um, for <laughs> for um, disallowing probably one of the goals at season that he definitely have been up there. What a strike yeah. it was! Um, yeah. So thanks, thanks for linesman. Um, <laughs> but but overall, they just everybody had a, everyone to a man had an impact. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Like you say, uh, Sam Sam came on and uh, it was a great debut. If that, if that goal would have gone in, that would have topped a, a great debut for him. Uh, I just thought every man, like you say, mentioned Liam. I mean, obviously, we're going to go more into detail about Liam and Alex later on, but I thought them two were, were fantastic. Um, and it, it was... It, it just shows the potential of the play, uh, what the players are capable of. And I think it's give the travelling fans a good taste of hopefully what's to come throughout this season. Yeah, we've already waxed lyrical about Starshenko, um, and yeah. I think if it were down to uh, to me, I think the three standout players um, in terms of like a man at match poll would have been Aaron, uh, Senna Nielsen, yeah. Liam Bateman, and, and Starshenko for just I think. But overall, everyone. Um, everyone was praising Alex after the game. It's a nice redemption story that um, you know, to to earn a start, but yeah. then take that start. And even if he didn't score, he was still everywhere on the pitch. He, like I said, he's got that elegance. He glides, yeah. um, and his his transitional play is fantastic. Yeah, I, I think um, I think he's 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 a good addition to the squad. Isn't he? I think he's a. Uh... He, he brings something else to the table. He's uh, he gives hundred uh, ten percent, and he's a he, he's going to be in, interesting to see what kind of season he has this season. Yep, I um I think today's episode is already sounding a lot more positive than the last one. Yeah, uh, and I'm hoping the people uh, listening who I can't thank enough. I've had a lot of people coming up saying how how we've um, how good it's been so far, and how they're enjoying it. Um, hopefully, it'll get better. Um, we've got more stuff coming, uh, including later. I'll, we'll tell you more about that. Um, but let's bring in Liam Bateman's interview. Where B- Bates is absolutely, is, um, as we've talked about before, he's a joker in the dressing room and he's great for squad harmony, but he's also brilliant on the pitch. Um, so here's his interview talking about the game, coming back from that injury in pre-season. We also asked him about how he's feeling right now. Um, obviously went off, uh, but he's okay. And we also, the most important question of the evening, was it a cross or was it a shot? So Liam, 3-0 victory, uh, first win of the season. What were your thoughts on the performance? Strong, very strong. This this is where we're at. This is our level and this is where we need to stay and keep pushing on with this. The perfect uh, response from Saturday. How needed was that? Well, obviously we conceded three. We need, now it's equaled out a bit. We've scored three. And a clean sheet, it's always great to have a clean sheet as a defender. It's, it's what you aim for. And then, obviously, attackers do what they do and we do what we do. So, yeah, it was great. Great result. It seemed like on Saturday we lost you know, a lot of the momentum that we had built up through pre-season. Was it just really good to see that the attacking intent were there, the progression was there? <laughs> we lost. Um, so, now this is where the season starts and with a win. We just need to keep pushing on. And, yeah, it's good to see what we put in pre-season actually come fruition. Was this something Craig reiterated before kickoff that this is a new start? Yeah, just just as go out there, enjoy it, have a smile on your face. And that's exactly what we did. We enjoyed playing football with each other, stuck as a team, attack as a team, defend as a team, and I think that's what it was. Everyone was doing their individual battles and we gelled together as a team and that's what worked. Obviously today getting your first start after picking up an injury in pre season, how much were you itching to get out there? Yeah, man, I was yeah, from from Saturday I wanted to kinda of get out there but um, I've got to take it steady. I don't want to do too much to where it hinders myself. So it was good to be out there and play and obviously get a goal as well. So I think that was, yes, it's what I would, and a clean sheet, which adds it to it as well. Obviously, being on the bench on Saturday, um, still not completely 100% fit there, but were there a little bit of fire in your belly, just wanting to come here and prove yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's always when we've got a strong team, so people, players can get. Um, switched over you can eat there's easy switches so it's kind of like you want to kind of solidify your position and actually hold it so you yeah that's it it's, it's always you're itching to get out there to prove yourself that you that's your position and obviously coming out uh, off at the end there how are you feeling currently feeling all right feel ready for saturday i just need to do my extra bits to get myself ready obviously it was a progressive um gaffer wanting me to kind of progressively get myself into it not fully 
go for the full 90. So it's just, yeah, we just want to take it step by step. I think the biggest question that everyone's uh, will be on everyone's lip, uh, lips after tonight, cross or shot? Definitely a cross, but I've got in a locker to do that as a goal as well. So it's this, obviously you hit and hope and it turned out to be something. So you, you've seen me, I've, I've, I do volleys, <laughs> I've done volleys in pre-season. So it's kind of, yeah, it's what I do. So, yeah. And I'm sure you'll take it. Definitely. If it says Liam Bateman next to the goals, then I'm happy for that. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's just all rounder. It's just good to obviously get a goal, but clean sheet is is amazing. And you get a clean sheet, you've got a chance. You're halfway there, aren't you? So I think the clean sheet and a goal, it just adds a adds a bit of cherry to the top. So Luke, Liam Bateman. I uh, I, I think he was um, uh, one of the one of the contenders for man of the match. I thought uh, from the start of the game. He, uh, he he sat on the front foot. The runs down the right hand side were causing him problems early doors. Um, he, he was, he, I mean, there were one one bit of play where they, uh, the ball was out, uh, came over their defender shielded it, and he managed to get a corner out of nothing. And it's that determination that shows how much uh, it, it makes him an even better player because he's, I mean, he's got the ability and to have the determination and the and the, and the uh, work rate is. He's a complete player. I think uh, he's not going. It's not just going forward. I think defensively, he, he, he's brilliant. I thought uh, he, he he was uh, he, he were a menace down that right. They couldn't deal with him. I thought uh, even the goal was uh, considered a cross, uh, but I think he he deserved it with the performance he had. I thought he he, he was instrumental. I thought he got stronger and stronger as the game went on, and uh, yeah, credit to him. Uh, and it were it, it it was a great performance all around. So we've talked enough about Sheffield FC, uh, which I could probably talk for another hour about that game, just because of how yeah. how good it was and how good yeah. we felt walking out of the ground. But we do have an FA Cup game on the horizon. Uh, it's been rather farcical because of the. Um, Obviously, uh, Bottisford were under investigation from the FA and the verdict is that we will now play Eastwood, um, which has been a nightmare for uh, getting the programme over the line. Uh, 1861, get yours on Saturday, only £2. It's including some new features in there as well with Zayn Akeem uh, from the changing room. I'll, I'll leave it there so you can enjoy the read. This will be our first time facing Eastwood community as, as a football club, as Eastwood a community, uh, been established in 2014. Like us, they've got a 3D laden uh, pitch at Holbrook Stadium. The Red Badgers come into this game on the back of three straight defeats. Uh, they opened the season with a 3-1 loss to Newark. Um, then they lost. Uh, they lost to one nil to Bottisford, but obviously progressed through that investigation. Um, and then we're beaten 4 0 by Anstey Nomads um, last Saturday, their first home game of the season. They also arrive at Sandy Lane managerless. Um, former Works Up Town midfielder James Jepson was in charge. Um, he won 37 games, uh, 37 of his 64 matches in charge, but resigned after those first two matches uh, in the league. So, Luke, difficult circumstances for Eastwood coming to Sandy Lane on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, like you, like you said, uh, the managerless, um, so they're not. It's not easy, but you never know if it could galvanise the squad. And I would imagine they're going to come with a game plan. Probably, to, I would imagine to frustrate works up and and hopefully nick a goal. Or uh, I think I, I think defence. I think what they've got to I would I would imagine focus on is a, def a strong defensive unit. Um, trying for straight works up. I think the longer the game goes on at nil nil, uh, the more we could get frustrated. Um, I think we need to be wary of, of, of that. I think we just need to be calm, collected. Um, but Eastwood will be. They play on the similar, similar, similar t uh, surface to us, so uh, that that will not be uh, uh, out of the comfort zone. Uh, maybe that might work into their advantage, but uh, I, 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 we've never played them before, so it's it's difficult to make any judgments. But uh, I think I, I think it'll be an interesting game. It'll be interesting to see how they set up as a team. Who's gonna Who's gonna take charge of their team uh, on Saturday? Um, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a derby because they're in Nottinghamshire, uh, not far from us. 
and uh, it'll be it, it'll be interesting because I, I think um, when smaller teams come, they'll make it hard for us, uh, and it'll be it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Let's now hear from Craig Parry, Liam Bateman, and Baxendale talking about the cup. Uh, Paz obviously um, had the game watched between Bottisford and Eastwood, so we'll have some ideas. But <clears throat> as he said, going into a bit of an uh, uncertainty going into the game. Uh, Liam spoke about how we can't underestimate our opponents uh, and Banks talked about, um, you know, obviously the FA Cup is a treat for non-league players as well and clubs and how he wants to go on a cup run. What am I expecting? Well, I need to get my scout out to do another report because uh, we've had one in uh, off Bottlesford, so uh, that's, that's, that's a starting point, but... Uh, yeah, I'm expecting a tough, a tough game. Uh, you know, whether we play, the, the thing is with a cup, it's a shootout. Everyone, you know, can can beat anyone on the day. And you know, we, I think, at home this week, I think the main thing for us is, is in front of his own crowd, is going and putting a performance on that they're going to be proud of, making sure that you know, come, you know, once the 90 minutes done, you know, on Saturday that we're in that and we we through to the next round. But we can't take anyone for granted. It's going to be a tough game. We've got to turn up. We've got to do the basics well. We've got to work hard, and hopefully that'll will get us the result that that's that's needed. Um, how good would it be to go on a cup run? Oh, great! That's 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 yeah. That's you. Well, it's obviously you focus on the league games when you're playing league games. When it's your cup, you focus on the cup. It's kind of everything. You just want to if you, if you're a footballer, you want to win, don't you? So. Winning's the option. <laughs> Despite us being, you know, the level above, um, how important is it that we do not underestimate them and take every team and make sure that we're on it? Well, I think it's just like pre-season. We played lower teams, and you have to show why they're a lower team and why we're where we are where we are. It's not about yeah. You have to hit it professionally and and treat every team as they can beat you. And I think that's what's what we need to how we need to approach it. Yeah, and last year, taking it back to previous managers. Uh, a uh, gaffer that I did a few years ago once said that you know you only have let's say you have a 14, 15 year career you only have 15 opportunities to have a cup run and then every time that's over he's, he's sort of running run around in my head thinking that's one year less that we've actually got to have in the FA Cup so it's one of them things that we want to you know Bottlesford or not we want to sort of get as far as we possibly can we want you know every single year you see that non-league team that's doing well you see the banter on Twitter that they're having. You see the hype that's around. You see the the the, the press it brings to the club and the hype it brings around. I want that. I, that is that is what I want. And I want to have a I want to have a cup run where you're looking back and going, that was a great time in my career because it's completely different to the league. It's a bit of a, a bit of a free hit for, for us non-league teams and things like that. So we want to have it, and like I say, I want it to be one year in my career that we uh, that we have a, that we have a good run. And you look back and you think, look at what we did that year. Um, and every year I think that. So we had a great one last year. I think obviously the Chester game still hurts me. To this day, when I look back at that performance that we put in, and you know, I, I have no doubt we were the better team on the day. We should have won that game. That that potentially could have been us, you know, playing against Spurs and things like that. And you know, I, some of the lads that we've got in here, I, I don't see why we can't have a have a decent run and have a good go at it. Um, and like I say, hopefully, hopefully that this this defeat that we've had today, the hurt that we're feeling right now, the hurt that I'm feeling, is gonna is gonna be that bit of a grit in our teeth that's gonna say, Do you know what, in the league, yeah, but even in the cups, let's see how far we can go and get a bit of a, a buzz around the place. Moving on, and now obviously we like to finish these podcasts with a little bit more, something more long form uh, in terms of interviews, and obviously we do the program interviews, um, and we're going to get guests on, as we said, and and talk about different things. Um, last week we had James Baxendale talking more about his coaching role, uh, and as you could tell, um, he was a little bit upset with the uh, with the result afterwards. Talking to him on Saturday, which is good to me, um, it shows a player cares and. You know, if it, like like I've said to a lot of people, you know, if you're, if you're in football and you're losing, you're not upset about it. You're in football for the completely wrong de- uh, reasons. Yeah. Um. This week, and uh, actually, before we go into this week's um <clears throat> interview at the end, next week, in terms of well, next episode, sorry, um, we're having we've got Aaron Senat Nielsen on. So if you could just, if anyone wants to ask any fan questions, let us know down below or message me per- personally. My Twitter is. Uh, at Devon Cash Media, I'm also going to be putting a post out on the forum, so look out for that, uh, and on our Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts. Um, so get your questions in. Uh, you'll get, obviously, a mention on the podcast and hopefully some interesting answers. So this week we've got you, Doug, on, and he personally told me to use that um, term because that's what the lads call him. Obviously, he's 
very uh, close knit with them, and he says, as he describes, they're a great bunch of lads. He absolutely loves them. They love him, and the the job that he puts in, obviously on on Tuesday night, I went down with him. I helped him set up a little bit because he's on his own. Because I think Will um, Will was unavailable. Uh, so I hope you're all right, Will. Um, but uh, the, the sheer dedication to his job, uh, his, his preparation is absolutely fantastic. He's organised, you know, it, it's a big job, but he got it done in an hour. And I was just, as I was helping him, he'd done about four of the jobs <laughs> by the time I'd filled all the water bottles up. Uh, absolutely gr- work ethic to a T. And he's absolutely thriving in his role, Luke. Yeah, uh, Ewan is a, he's a massive part of the squad. Um, he, he does a lot of things behind the scenes. He, he loves the job. He loves the club. He loves the town. He's, uh, he's he's come up from Essex, and he's um, he, he's 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 like he's, he's one of us, you know. He's 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 in, he's embedded into the club. Uh, I, I think he does a terrific job off the field. I mean, he does he does a lot of things that people don't realise. I mean, they see him obviously helping out with the training and with water bottles and helping out on the dugout when he can. You know, he's always there to lift. He's always there to to. To Parry to turn around to if he needs if he needs anything. Um, I, I think he, he's a terrific bloke. Uh, I know him on. I used to work with him, so I know him on a personal level. And he's a he's a terrific guy, uh, and a, uh, he has a great sense of humour. Um, I, I think he bounces off the pl- the back players bounce off him, and he bounces off them. Uh, I, I, it's funny with the the the, the pink shirt. Uh, I think that's that's that just shows how close they are with, with each other uh, and I, I, I believe he, he's uh, he's a great part of the squad and I think he helps out massively and uh, I, I I know the good work will continue because his work ethic like you said is terrific so obviously we can't say what's on the pink shirt because um, we are a family show um, but <laughs> Ewan's just great for morale as we've said and he, he's integrated in squad, uh, into the squad really well um, does a fantastic job and non-league relies on its volunteers. Uh, every non-league club needs that. You know, it's all right, the players and that, and obviously they take huge credit, the players that come here and we're, you know, proud to have them on board, but the club doesn't run without its volunteers and um, we want to highlight that, um, getting some different people on and that um, and highlighting what they do and how they're enjoying it because um, they are sort of the unsung heroes. So, Here's you, dog. So, Ewan, welcome to the Tiger Talk podcast. Uh, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, Devin. Yes, yeah, very well, thank you. You've been in the job, obviously, now two seasons. How did the opportunity come about and how have you enjoyed this past, well, season and uh, going into the second one, even though the first one wasn't really a season? Well, it came about was I started off at our under-21s. I'd done about a season, season off there and then... I wanted to progress, so I got hold of Craig Denton. He told me to get hold of Keith Harlett. So I got hold of Keith Harlett, gave Keith Harlett a phone. He invited me down for an interview with him and Pete. He went down for my interview and basically offered me the job right there and then. But the final decision was down to pass at the end of the day. And you've settled in really well. Uh, how has it been uh, so far? Yeah, I've settled in very well, thank you. Um, loving it every single minute of it, mate. Great set of boys. Great management, can't ask for any more. Just loving every single minute of it. And it's all down, thanks to Pete and Keith for, uh, and Paz offering me the job, basically. Obviously, we've just come from the changing room area here at Sheffield FC, looking absolutely brilliant. Um, how you, Obviously, you've come down, got everything settled early, ready for the lads, so they've got no pressure on there. They can come in straight and do that. How happy are you with the sort of professionalism of, of the club? Yeah, very, very, very happy with a professional run at the club. The club is run at a professional level. The only difference is we're a semi-professional outfit at the end of the day. Going back to my role, I like to be prepared, get here early, as you've touched on, to make the lad's job as easy as possible. That is what a kit man's all about, basically, is to make sure everything's set up for when lads come up. That all they've got to do is just turn up and play. And we've already seen, obviously, you've integrated yourself with the squad. Um, the banter between you lot is, is, is absolutely brilliant. And obviously, you're a well-regarded uh, member of the team. Um, is that something that's helped you settle, it, settle in? Oh, yeah, defo, mate. i say you've touched on it there. The banter, mate, is just, like, second to none. It's brilliant, mate. Everybody's playing pranks on everybody. 
it's just not one certain person everybody's doing it to each other and it, as, as you say it's made me settle in very well like um, as I say and just loving every single minute of it and I suppose it's important for the squad anyway for that high squad morale oh yes definitely mate it, it, it gets you like six nine twelve points a season morale like that it's brilliant like we all bounce off each other we're one big family like yeah you mentioned family there it's like um, even bringing your daughter in Tilly the lads have taken to her brilliantly last season and they're still um, hold her in hard regard as like, like yourself um, and you mentioned the family aspect it is like that isn't it oh yeah 100% like it's made my daughter very very welcome you know I can't ask for any more like they treat her as they treat her as one of us so obviously the squad will be hoping to have a successful year this year. Uh, have you got any aspirations where you want to go with this kit man job? Um, basically, I'd love to just do it full time and hopefully I can get that opportunity to work top town and we have a very good working relationship and we can get to where we want to be in five years, six years, conference, conference north. Let's bring it on. So before we go and you can enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon or evening, um, we've got a couple of things to tell you about. If you're uh, 16 and 18, or you are, um, you know, thinking obviously the A level results and the, the GCSEs were released last week, um, and you're thinking about going into a, a, a more of a sports uh, environment as a, a college level, um, the Way of Town Academy have got something perfect for you. We have a level three extended diploma in sport. And there'll be an open day on Thursday, the 26th of August, between 1pm and 3pm. It's uh, a chance to learn more about the exciting new course uh, and the opportunity to play and study full-time at our world-class facilities. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of investment at uh, Works Up Town on the uh, off-the-field side. Um, so if you're interested... You know, go m- talk more about the academy. Uh, go and visit their Facebook page and in- uh, and Twitter uh, to find out a bit more information. Or if you've got any inquiries, uh, please contact them at info at worksuptownacademy.co.uk to learn more. And also visit the website, which is worksuptownacademy.co.uk. And as we're on the younger side, we mentioned a lot about the first team, but a lot of them pl- under twenty ones players will be making hopefully the step up into the first team at a future date. They, uh, the under-21s are playing Shirebrook Town at the Windsor Food Service Stadium Friday night, 7.45pm kickoff. Luke and I will be there reporting on the game, but they'll be extremely grateful for your support. It gets them, you know, especially for a young player to have a, uh, a crowd behind them. Yeah. Um, it certainly um, benefits them because they'll have the uh, experience of playing in front of our magnificent fans. Um, for when they do make that step up. We've already seen likes of Richie Goddard, Ryan Green and John Lowe make that step up in pre-season and yeah. you know, maybe we'll see them um, soon in the first team, hopefully. Um, but that's it. Uh, obviously, if in future, we'll be telling you more about the under-21s fixtures and the under-19s fixtures. I know they've had a bit of complications on when the league will start. And so hopefully we can bring some positive news on next episode. But Luke, that is it for episode three. Yeah, I think it's been a great one. Um, so yeah, on, on a bet, brighter note now with uh, the performance and looking forward to the FA Cup. Um, yeah, and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, it's certainly been a better episode to talk about a win and hopefully we've got plenty more coming over the season.